So let's go ahead to uh, work on some math, which is uh, troublesome, but we need that, right? As I said, the way, I, uh, maybe I did not say, the way I teach in all this class is that I try to explain everything to you in the class. You need to follow me. Maybe you will find that it's too easy, but, uh, or maybe it's messy, but I want you to follow because I almost not expect you don't have time to go back to study and do something more, uh, something deeper, right? I assume that some of you cannot do that. Fielding J equation, what is this? Uh, first of all, I need to tell you that every system, physical system, right? has a Hamiltonian. This one we mentioned many times, but what is Hamiltonian? We will study a little bit more in the future when we talk about Lagrangian and Hamiltonian. For those who take taken classical mechanics, of course, you know that. But really nothing, uh, of course, this is very fancy and also very deep in theory. But basically, you just treat it as a, the total energy of a system, right? So any system has a total energy. Of course, uh, it is very complicated, but uh, just treat it as that. And for example, if you have a, a simple harmonic oscillator, the total energy is the potential energy plus the kinetic energy, right? And you know how to describe that. And of course, every system also has a state, right? And I call it psi. Okay, make sense? And the Schrodinger equation is just tell us that how the stage will evolve for a given Hamiltonian. So the Schrodinger equation is just the same as the Newton's law. It tells us how something will evolve. And this is something doesn't hurt to memorize it. What does it say here? It says I have a state. The rate of change of this state times i and h bar equals to the Hamiltonian times the state itself. Okay? And if we look at the matrix, that will be easier to understand. For example, if I have a one qubit, we expect this Hamiltonian, I think this is not a hard market, just the Hamiltonian. If this is a matrix, it must be a two by two matrix. Right, first row is zero, 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 one. Second row is one, zero, one, one. And how about the states? How you describe the states of this two dimensional system in the matrix, in a column form? Two complex number, alpha, beta, very good, right? So then Schrodinger equation becomes very easy. Actually, in some sense, people, some people think that they should teach quantum mechanics from a qubit from a spin, right? It's not all those difficult differential equations. This one tells us what? I h bar partial partial t of alpha beta equals to h zero zero h zero one h one zero h one one alpha beta. It's just a system of linear equation, right? Because I can then equate each row, right? The first row is I h bar partial alpha partial t equals to, just do the matrix multiplication, h0 zero, zero times alpha plus h0 zero, one times beta. The second row is I h bar partial beta partial t equals to h1 zero alpha plus h1 one, one beta. A system of linear equation. So what we are trying to show you here is that Schrodinger equation is nothing fancy. If you don't try to ask yourself where it comes from, try to dig into the physics. It's just that you give a state. This state it can be represented as the linear combination of the basis state. When we say alpha, what does it mean? It means that we have alpha part of zero. We have beta part of one, right? Which we are saying that psi equals to alpha zero plus beta one, right? 
So now we don't need to think about what is the basis. We only look at the coefficient. Using this, solving this uh, system of linear equation, I will know under this Hamiltonian, this Hamiltonian can be the magnetic field, external magnetic field plus some potential or whatever, kinetic energy, and it tells us how alpha and beta changes as a function of time. Say okay? 